We're back here at the Ruger Gallery of the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters with Phil Schreier, senior curator here. We're here at Ruger Gallery because we're talking Hollywood guns. This great display here at the Firearms Museum, which Phil has been extended. It's it great has. news. Just like a uh, successful Broadway production, Hollywood Guns uh, has had an entire year tacked onto its uh, play here at the National Firearms Museum. We'll be here with the uh, 105 of the finest uh, firearms from Hollywood history uh, until the spring of 2012. And, and it's great because we get to tell the story uh, of, of the firearms and also the movies because uh, you once again chosen a great selection of firearms from a great selection of films. Today's is, is, is no exception. Talking Die Hard, I mean, one of my favorite series of, of films, Bruce Willis, and, and tell us about the firearm and let's talk about the firearm in the movie a little bit. Well, uh, Bruce Willis, uh, as we know in, in, in Die Hard 1, uh, we have Alan Rickman's uh, gun uh, as Hans Gruber, you know, and we have Bruce Willis's, you know, Beretta 92. Right. Uh, but it was the second Die Hard film where the HK MP5 gets some play. Oh. And the second Die Hard film uh, is unique in the fact that it took place just up the road from here. Dulles, Dulles Airport. Airport, yeah. That's right. And if you remember in the film, uh, a, a very out of the place little white church in the Glen, you know, just yeah. seemed to be off the last runway to <laughs> right, the left, yeah, right? Hey, where'd that come from? Yeah, <laughs> and, and so they had this assault, and uh, one of the protagonists, all his guys, are basically staging a, uh, an attack on the church. Right. So what we've done uh, with this episode and last week's episode, we're kind of showing us behind the curtain a little bit, some tricks of the trade as it were. Hollywood magic. Hollywood magic. Right. And when those guys attack the church, if you remember, they're all firing HK MP5. Right. They're cycling full auto. Right. And then he goes, and you notice that they all have blue gaffer's tape or electrician's tape and on some mags. And he says, okay, get rid of the, the blue and put in the red. Oh. Because basically they had been mock staging a fight against themselves to deceive other right. people into thinking that they were actually trying to get in. So the blue mags were supposedly blank ammo. Got it. And the red mags were real bullets. Live ammo. Oh. Big problem with that, John. It causes the gun to blow up first shot every time. Without fail. Why? That, that's a problem. <laughs> Why, you might ask? Why? <laughs> Why? It looks so easy on camera. Uh, it, 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 it's just something that when I saw it, I was just like, you got to be kidding. It, it, it would never work in a million years. Because uh, firearms, semi-automatic, full automatic, are meant to cycle the action. One force going way, one way and equal and opposite reaction going the right. other to cycle the bolt. Simple physics. The problem is, is that thing called force. Uh -huh. When that bullet's moving out the barrel, the force of the escaping gas pr pushes back as well as forward. Right. But what if there's no bullet? What if there's nothing going out the front of the gun? Then there's no backward pressure. Right. So that breech is just going to sit there and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. next and you'd have to cycle it by hand. Uh, so what the Hollywood armorers do uh, is they, uh, they take uh, the diameter of the barrel here. Some of these guns have actual thread on uh, uh, blank adapters. Right. And sometimes, like on a 1911 or 92F, they just take the actual barrel. And, I mean, you can get cheap barrels for a lot of these right. guns, $10, 15 something like that. And, and they... Uh, they thread it and then s deep enough into the barrel where it can't be picked up by the camera, they put a little set screw no. with a tiny aperture in it. Okay. So what happens is they load the blanks themselves. These are all custom blanks. Right. Uh, Stembridge Cinema Weaponry, Hollywood Guns and Props. They load their own blanks uh, to enough pressure so that that little aperture creates enough of a delay to work the action. Wow. And so if you were to have a bullet accidentally go like, off, it's like going to hit that set screw not, not, and that's going to blow the gun up. Not a good day. Not a good day. So in fact, it is a physical, physical uh, uh, impossibility for, for just switching a right. blank machine gun <laughs> with real ammo. 
uh, and having it having it work. But thanks to Hollywood magic, just like that church appeared, that worked. That's right. And, and don't they say when you go to a movie, you have to sus suspend disbelief? Right. <laughs> or if you want to enjoy the movie. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that's the uh, that's the tricks of the trade. Wow, that is behind cool. uh, Die Hard Two, and uh, how a uh, semi-automatic or full automatic uh, firearm functions. And the cool thing about Hollywood guns, and and it it. it bears repeating we talked about this before these are the actual firearms used you mentioned the prop houses you've been there so this is the as real deal as you're going to get out here it's amazing to just not only talk about this but to see the actual firearms that the prop house use and it's it's a an incredible collection and by the way tell folks how they can come and see this here at the uh, firearms museum well we're open in fairfax virginia just outside washington dc the intersection of route 66 and 50 in fairfax county virginia we're open seven days a week, 9.30 to 5. Admission is free and there's plenty of ample parking. However, if you can't make it to Northern Virginia and you still want to see these wonderful guns before the exhibit comes down, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.org. And the good news with the extension, if you're in the D.C. area for summer vacation, spring break, whatever fall, you can still get here and see this wonderful, not only this wonderful display, but this incredible museum. Well, we it's a appreciate national treasure. That. Phil Schreier, thank you for being with us today and sharing more of Hollywood Guns on the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.